Hello and welcome to another episode of Katie the Science Lady. I'm Mrs. Jacobson and today we'll be talking about the carbon and nitrogen cycles. So let's learn together. All right, y'all, carbon and nitrogen cycle time. So we are going to kind of do a quick overview about ecosystems, talk about where carbon and nitrogen are, um, how abundant they are, and talk about how they can, we can get them out of the atmosphere and then how we also put them back into the atmosphere. So I wanted to start this off because we haven't talked about our levels of organization in a while. And there are more levels of organization than going just from cell to tissue to organ, organ system, and organism. We have to make it the macro scale too. So we have organisms like you and me, we're a singular organism, but when we get together, like in my classroom, I have 30 um, members of the same species in one location, 30 humans. So we are a population in one area. Now, if all of my students decided to bring in their pets, so their cats, their dogs, their alligators, their snakes, their birds, I mean, I've heard some crazy things. All of us together would be a community because we're different populations living in the same location. So different species living together. Then our ecosystem, we could have our entire what, North America, our Texas, wherever we're, we are, could be our ecosystem. This would include all the biotic and abiotic factors in the same location. So it includes things like the weather. It includes water. So rivers, lakes, streams, includes our um, resources. So the actual shape of our land makes up our ecosystem as well. Um, so I like to think of ecosystem as being basically where you live, all the parts that make up where you live. And then going down from their community is everybody. Population is just members of your species. And then organism is just you. Now we're going to talk about the carbon cycle first. Um, I find this potentially more complicated and I'll explain why in a minute. Carbon goes back and forth between our atmosphere and the earth often. There are things that we do that release carbon. There are things that occur that trap carbon. Um, and it's a constant cycle. So it's not so much that we can personally do a whole lot to, to change this, but it's something that as humans, we are contributing to a lot. Um, and it happens in a lot of different ways. So looking at our atmosphere in this picture down here, there are lots of different um, things that make up our atmosphere. We have nitrogen gas over here. We have oxygen. Um, we have water vapor and we have carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is incredibly prevalent in our atmosphere. Um, this is what we produce when we breathe out. So me talking a lot right now, I'm breathing out a lot of, a lot of carbon dioxide into my atmosphere. So that is one way that we take carbon from our bodies and release it. We just breathe, um, and that is a huge way that we release it. Other ways that this may cycle back and forth include photosynthesis. This is one of the major ways that we pull carbon from our atmosphere into um, the earth. So plants take in carbon dioxide, and they change that into glucose. So they take in carbon dioxide, CO2, and those Cs, those carbons, sorry, this way, are going to become C6H12O6. That's glucose. So we literally take those building blocks from the carbon and the oxygen and we puzzle piece them together to make sugar. So anytime a plant is storing sugar, whether it's potatoes or carrots or just flowers, um, we are trapping that carbon. Then the opposite, when we breathe out, like I said, uh, that's releasing carbon back into the air. So we break down that sugar, I'm breaking down my lunch right now, and I'm releasing carbon back into the air. A couple of other ways that we can release carbon into our atmosphere include decomposition. So when things die and break down, that carbon releases as gas, and we burn things. So I'm not just talking about burning a match, I'm talking about burning fossil fuels. So the gasoline in your car, when that burns, you release carbon. Um, when factories burn different fossil fuels in order to make their mechanics work, that is going to be burning some fuel as well. So anytime we do that, that occurs. In addition, the ocean and our bodies of water, they can trap carbon in them as well. So carbon dioxide from the air can get trapped into our uh, bodies of water and it can actually sink into the ocean floor, and then eventually it can be brought back up. 
So there's a bunch of ways that this can happen. Um, you can look up different diagrams. I'll show you a diagram soon. But there are lots of ways that it can be trapped and released. You just have to kind of take note of what they are in a given situation. So in this case here, when things die, that's what detritus is. It's dead and decomposing things. Um, they become part of the carbon in our in our soil. So whether that's on land or in water, um, that carbon can be stored here. It can be released into the water. Um, as, as things breathe, we breathe out carbon dioxide, releasing it to the atmosphere. Um, things burning, released into the atmosphere. And then the major way that we get this carbon back into the earth is photosynthesis. This is why plants are so important. They're pretty much one of the only things that lets us take carbon out of our atmosphere. So that's a big key here. When we talk about the nitrogen cycle, it's really important to note that nitrogen makes up the majority of our atmosphere, but we can't use it <laughs> in that form. So if you look at this little stat here, it's 78-ish percent of our Earth's atmosphere, but we cannot use it as it appears. So N2, that kind of diatomic molecule of two nitrogen um, together, we cannot use that as it stands. Um, but through the nitrogen cycle, we convert this nitrogen into a form that we can use and that plants can use. So if you look at this pie chart here, uh, you can see that nitrogen is the vast majority of what's in our atmosphere. We do have quite a bit of oxygen as well, which is good. Um, we do have carbon dioxide, other gases, argon, but nitrogen is the biggest one. The nitrogen cycle, one of the most important things to remember is that we are trapping nitrogen in the soil. And then we need to get it to plants um, and get it into a form that plants can use so that we can eat the plants and gain nitrogen that way. We do need it for a lot of our body processes, our um, proteins that are really important to everything in our body. One of their major elements is nitrogen. So proteins are really, really reliant on nitrogen as well. Nitrogen fixation, this is a process that bacteria that live in the soil do. And they do this just to convert that nitrogen gas into something plants can use. They're really important. And this is the major key of the nitrogen cycle is nitrogen fixing bacteria. Their job is to convert that nitrogen gas into something our plants can use. In addition, plants take up nitrogen that's not usable by consumers and they use it to make things. Amino acids for our proteins, nucleic acids like DNA and RNA. Um, and you can kind of see that sometimes they get fixed by these nodules on their roots. If we look at the nitrogen cycle as a whole, overall, it's really bacteria driven. It's something that's kind of weird to think about. So the nitrogen is in our atmosphere. It can be brought down to earth um, by a couple of different things, rain, lightning. Those can all bring down nitrogen into our soil. Then we can also have um, plants or animals decompose and that nitrogen comes into the soil. But the big thing driving this process here is the nitrogen fixing bacteria. So we can see them here. And then we see the opposite, denitrifying bacteria here. That's also how nitrogen can be released from the soil. So nitrogen fixing bacteria puts it into a form that we can actually use. And then denitrifying bacteria releases it back into the atmosphere. The major, major key here is nitrogen fixing bacteria. They run the show here. On that topic of bacteria, we, I want to talk about microorganisms in our environment or bacteria in the environment. There are good bacteria and there are not so good bacteria. The good bacteria, lots of them are necessary for things like the carbon cycle and the nitrogen cycle. A lot of these are present as decomposers. They help to break things down. Um, our nitrogen fixing bacteria are good because we need them to do that. Um, a lot of bacteria can help our ecosystems recover. Sometimes they're used for things like uh, cleaning up after oil spills. So there are special kinds of bacteria that actually eat oil and they will consume it so that it's out of our oceans and things like that. It's pretty cool actually. Um, fungi can enhance root functions in plants. They can help plants to thrive. All of this is just to say that bacteria and um, decomposers overall are not bad things. They can be really helpful to the environment. And again, I put this um, article here. We have oil eating bacteria. They help to clean up the deep water horizon, uh, horizon oil spill. So that was naturally occurring bacteria that can help clean these things up. So they do have some really important functions. 
However, we can also have not so helpful microorganisms. Bacteria and fungi are toxic to plants and animals. We know this because if you eat the wrong kind of mushrooms, you will get sick. Um, you can get bacterial infections. Some aquatic microorganisms, some, some of these um, bacteria can wipe out ecosystems. They can start to grow and just take over the entire ecosystem. Um, things like algae, they can, if they have the right kind of situation, they can grow so much that they will literally choke out all the other life around them. And they will be the only thing able to reproduce. Um, red tides and dead zones are other examples of this. And I'll show a couple of pictures of these things. So here is our red tide. Um, these are algal blooms. We've got all of these algae that are just choking out all the life around them. And they're all that you see. Again, more algae here. Um, you can tell that people are trying to clean it up. It's really difficult. Um, and things can't grow in this area because light can't get through that layer. And that's the main issue is that they'll create a layer that light can't get through. So there can be no plant life underneath it. Um, these will create dead zones. So as those algal blooms and everything else, they, as they go away, they've created a space underneath them where nothing grows. So that can last for quite a long time until it starts to kind of regrow all that life back. Okay, let's get into some of the major points about the carbon and nitrogen cycles. My students tend to find some difficulties with this because there are so many different ways that carbon especially can be removed from the atmosphere or released into the atmosphere. But that's the, the main thing we have to remember. Carbon is found in abundance in our atmosphere and on Earth. We are what we call carbon-based life forms. And as such, we just have to think of all the different ways that we could be taking carbon out of the atmosphere and releasing it into the atmosphere. Here's an example of each. When plants take in carbon dioxide, again that hint carbon, from the atmosphere to do photosynthesis, they are storing it as sugar. So carbon gets stored as sugar in plants. In addition, we release carbon in really large amounts when we burn fossil fuels. So when we are using um, regular gasoline to power our cars, many factories release fossil fuels into the atmosphere. They're called usually emissions. Um, that's how we're releasing this carbon into the atmosphere. There are many other ways, but you'd have to go ahead and find those back in the video. I'm not gonna go through all of them right now. In addition, nitrogen gas makes up the majority of our atmosphere, but the kind of crazy thing is we can't use nitrogen gas. So nitrogen gas has to be fixed for us uh, by some very, very special bacteria in the soil. They are called nitrogen fixing bacteria and they turn nitrogen gas into a formula that plants can use. Then as we eat the plants or eat animals that eat the plants, we can gain that nitrogen to use in our own bodies as well. And that's it for today. I hope you guys learned something today. Um, this is a pretty complicated topic. So if you need other resources, um, please feel free to obviously find other videos. I'm sure they're over here somewhere on your sidebar. Um, as always, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel, and I hope you had fun, I hope you learned something, and I'll see you later.